This is a paper by Andre Dudenhefner with the title Undecidability of Semi-Unification on a Napkin. And this paper has won an award. So it is a pleasure to, um, to announce. I think it, is, it was already announced <laughs> in the program, but uh, it is a pleasure to um, award this best paper by junior researcher to Andre Dudenhefner for this work. And that you can see, hopefully, because I'm sharing my screen, you probably can see there the certificate. And um, the talk has been recorded. So I'm going to now stop sharing the certificate and start sharing the talk. OK, and if it all goes well, you should now be able to... Welcome to my talk on the undecidability of the same unification problem and the title says on a napkin because the new idea actually fits on a small piece of paper and in fact was conceived on such a small piece of paper. Uh, here you see a faithful recreation of that small piece of paper. When Pavel Ulichin Uh, we lost the audio. Maribel, we lost the audio. Maybe you cannot uh, switch off the audio. Sorry. Of the same unification problem and entitled of the same unification problem and entitled sense on a napkin because the new idea actually fits on a small piece of paper and in fact was conceived on such a small piece of paper. Uh, here you see a faithful recreation of that small piece of paper. When Pavel Ulichin, one of the original authors of the uh, undecidability results for civil implications, saw this uh, approach, he described it as a cut eliminated version of the original approach, but where cut elimination actually leads to a much more concise proof. So the same unification problem itself talks about terms. And here we will just need one binary term constructor arrow and then some variables so we can consider simple types here to be terms. And same unification is just a simple combination of first order unification combined with magic. So specifically, we are given inequalities here, which are just pairs of terms and look for a unifier such that each inequality can be individual matched. So specifically on the right hand side, you will just have the unifier. And on the left hand side, you are allowed for each individual inequality after applying the unifier to also applying the matching substitution. Now this problem looks quite simple. And in fact, it was a long-standing open problem where some researchers believed that the problem itself is decidable. And it was very surprising to then see that it is not although both of the combined, uh, both of the problems are just uh, easily p-time solvable problems. And the original undecidability result is once again by Kfori and Turin in origin. Now, same unification occurs quite naturally and also first occurs in a type inference algorithm for polymorphic programming languages, so specifically polymorphic functional programming uh, quite naturally contains the same unification problem, which we will see in a second, but also logic programming uh, has uh, same unification in there. Um, there are also other results. So for example, uh, system F can be tied to same unification, but not only just the type inference or type checking problems are in relation with same unification, but also 
Simulification has found its way in term rewriting, program analysis, and even natural language processing. And there are many more applications since uh, the problem itself is quite natural, as we will see next. So let's consider an example. And here, let's consider in Haskell a function, an iteration function that iterates the functions f and g as many times as the first argument suggests. So if we iterate f and g zero times, then we just return our original uh, argument. If we iterate one times, clearly we have uh, applying here f and g next two times as f and g applies two times. So you can imagine in Haskell one possible implementation, of course, on zero just returns the x. And for n times, first we apply f to the x, then we iterate n minus one times g and f in reverse order. So here we have f and g, and here we have g and f. And finally, we apply g to have our iteration implementation. Now in Haskell, if you use type inference, uh, your type, which is in first unified the types of f and g. So here both types are assigned the signature a to a because here uh, f and g are given in particular order and here the recursive call uh, switches the positions of f and g. So that's why Haskell unifies those arguments. Now why is that the fact? Uh, the case, it is the case because in Haskell or for example ML you have parametric polymorphism. And in parametric polymorphism, you are restricted only to monomorphic recursive calls for your function definition. So specifically, in our example, if our function signature has um, f b of type a to b and g b of type a beta to alpha, f being alpha to beta and g being beta to alpha, then in the recursive call, this uh, exchange of uh, arguments, they need to be unified with the function signature, and that's why we necessarily arrive at both alpha and beta being instantiated uh, by one single constant. Now, this one is uh, a, of course, uh, decidable way to have, or computable way to have type inference, because we just need uh, to unify those. If you want to instantiate your recursive calls, then you need recursive polymorphism, where your recursive calls may be arbitrarily instantiated by the additional substitution sign. So here specifically, we have our function signature, where the first function has type alpha to beta, and the second function has type beta to alpha. And after unification, we may also instantiate this recursive call and here the simple solution to be for the unifier I give alpha as alpha, beta, and beta, but now for instantiation exchange alpha and beta. And that's why recursive polymorphism uh, then naturally implies that we need to solve a same unification problem because for each recursive call we need to find also a matching uh, such that the resulting types are equal. Now, the original proof for undecidability by Corey Turing and Nozichin is quite involved. It starts from Turing machine immortality, which was shown by Hoover in the 60s to be undecidable, then switches to a boundedness problem for Turing machines, then switches to a more involved model of computation of symmetric intercell Turing machines and considers uniform boundedness there. Uh, from here, it gets more tailored, so um, we then go to a, a path equation uh, system, which is a tailored rewriting system. After that, we arrive at uh, a sort of uh, redox construction system and consider normalization in the system, and then finally we arrive at same unification. Uh, here, the second part is quite uh, custom tailored for the same unification problem, and here this intermediate problem is also um, uh, quite artificial uh, for the case of seminification. Overall, as a science remark, the proof uses uh, classical logic, specifically fluid middle, and Koenig's lemma to arrive at the result. Let's contrast it to the new proof of undecidability. The new proof of undecidability also starts at Turing machine immortality. Then, uh, many one, uh, then <coughs> Turing uses it to 
stack machine uniform boundness. So it is quite similar to the intercell Turing machine case. Here we are in a very simple uh, model of computation of stack machines and inspecting uniform boundness of those. And from there, we actually directly go to a fragment of same unification showing its undecidability. Now, society remarks the first step is quite similar to the first two step, steps of the original proof. But now, instead of uh, Koenig's lemma, we are using the fan theorem, which is uh, in the logic of uh, Brouwer's intuitionism. So we slightly constructivized uh, the first part of the proof. And the second part of the proof is actually quite uh, more simple than the original approach because first it is fully constructive and can even be mechanized in axiom free cock in just 1500 lines of code so the uh, mathematical argument is quite short and that's also why the mechanization is quite simple compared to other undecidability mechanizations now let's first look at the definition of the model of computation of stack machines that we use here we use the restriction stack machines in the so-called simple stack machines where we have a left stack and a right stack for which instructions either pop a symbol A from the left stack uh, in state P and push then a symbol B on the right stack and transition into state Q. Or we can alternatively pop a symbol from the right stack <coughs> and push the new symbol onto left stack Y transitioning from state P to state Q. Now, such a simple state machine with just a list of instructions. Configurations for such a machines then, of course, are triple, uh, triples containing the left stack, the current state, and the right stack. And then the step relation, if we pop an A from the left and push a B on the right, then, of course, we need to remove the symbol A from the left stack and add the symbol B onto the right stack while also transitioning from state P to state Q. And similarly, if we have uh, popping B from the right stack and pushing A from the left stack, which we, uh, which is here the second line. Now, a simple stack machine can be just considered a state bounded intercell Turing machine where the state can be seen uh, being between two cells and uh, space bounded in the sense that we cannot just arbitrarily extend stacks because we just always pumping one step and pushing one step, always preserving the combined size of the two stacks. Now, the undecidable problem for um, our machine model is uniform boundedness. Namely, given such a simple stack machine, we are looking for uniform bound n on the number of reachable configurations from any configuration. So specifically, we are searching for such a uniform bound n such that from any configurations n, uh, x, the number of reachable configurations y is uniformly bounded by this uh, number n. Now, simple stack machines have quite some good properties. Specifically, they are mechanization friendly in the sense that specification in COC is just 30 lines of code. And since you're just dealing with two stacks or two lists, the transition function is quite simple. You don't have this problem of potentially infinite tape of Turing machines. Also, since the sizes of the stacks, uh, so the combined size is invariant under reduction, we have also decidable reachability and termination by just exploring the uh, bounded space given by uh, the combined size of the stacks. Uh, but still, we have an undecidable uniform boundedness problem, which can be shown by reduction from Turing machine mortality quite similar to the uniform boundedness proof in the original uh, proof of undecidability of same unification. So here we will not consider this part since it is quite similar to the existing one. So let's see um, a fragment of same unification which is still undecidable and here is quite close to the machine model that we are looking at. Specifically, we here we uh, will look at the so-called simple same unification where we unify so-called simple constraints. And simple constraints consists of a pair of uh, triples where uh, the left triple 
will consist of a symbol A, then a uh, variable alpha and epsilon is just standing for the empty words to give a better intuition and correspondence to the stack machines. Uh, the right hand part will consist of a variable and a symbol B. And now such a simple constraint is, we say, modeled by a triple of a unifier phi and two matching substitutions psi zero and psi one, such that if our constraint has uh, is of this shape, then depending on the symbol A, we are picking on the left hand side the matching substitution either psi zero or psi one, depending on A, and B tells us whether we descend to the left or to the right of the arrow. So for B zero, we descend to the left of the arrow, and for B equals to one, we descend to the right of the arrow. But overall, our uh, uh, structure of simulification, where on the right-hand side, we just have a unifier, and on the left-hand side, we have uh, first the unifier, and then our matching remains the same. Now, the simple signification problem, of course, is if you are given such a set of constraints, uh, you are asking whether there is a model that uh, models each of the given constraints. This fragment uh, we will show undecidable by induction from uniform boundness of uh, the simple stack machines. Now, let's first develop an intuition for the proof and consider some examples. So the first example will be a non uniformly bounded state machine <laughs> that will translate to an unsolvable simple state unification problem. And let's consider just a machine that pops a zero from the left stack, remains in the same state, and pushes then a one on the right stack. So, specifically, if we are start, you know, if we start with the left stack being a couple of zeros, then we pop a zero from the left, push a one on the right, pop a zero from the left, push a one on the right, and once again, arrive with an empty left stack and here three ones on the right stack. So clearly, each run of such a machine will terminate after it has popped enough zeros from the left stack and pushed then enough zeros onto the right stack. So specifically, if we have n zeros on the left stack, then we can reach n plus one distinct configuration, just popping those zeros and pushing ones under the right stack. But also this shows that we have no chance of finding a uniform bound on the number of reachable configurations because the number of reachable configurations uh, then is clearly dependent on how many zeros do we have on the left stack. Now, if we just encode this instruction as a simple constraint, where we have popping a zero means uh, having zero on the left hand side and pushing a one means having one on the right hand side. Then solving this constraint would apply would imply finding a unifier phi and also a matching substitution psi such that we have this equality, but here you can clearly see the left hand side is larger than the right hand side because the left hand side has an instantiated uh, subterm, which is the right hand side. So clearly, the left hand side is larger. And in finite types, we cannot have a model for uh, this simple constraint. So here, the overall intuition is since uh, the machine explores arbitrary deep the left hand side, we also need to go arbitrary deep onto uh, the, uh, to the right of the arrow and would uh, require infinite terms uh, for this to model. Now let's compare it to a bounded example. So here, let's consider the machine that switches between states P and Q and just either pops a zero uh, from the left and pushes one on the right, or maybe it pops one on the left and pushes zero on the right, but just remains local. So overall, if we start with the zero on the left in state P, then we may push a one on the right, go to Q, then we may go back to P again, pushing one on the left, then maybe back to Q again, pushing zero on the right, and then arrive back 
at our initial starting configuration where we have uh, zero on the left and R in state P. Uh, but overall, it is easy to see that each configuration for such a machine either immediately holds or to, uh, does exactly this transition between P and Q, switching zeros and one uh, ones uh, immediately on the left or immediately on the right. So overall, any configuration reaches at most four distinct configurations, and that's why we have a uniform bound of four for this machine. Now, if we translate this to simple constraints in a very direct manner, so each uh, instruction is then directly translated to a simple constraint, then the set of equalities that we need to satisfy is as follows. Uh, and here, if we uh, are searching for uh, a model, then we see that phi of q clearly needs to be an arrow. So let's set phi of q to be beta to beta. Then uh, sigma and tau just can be picked as beta. Uh, phi of p can be some variable, let's say it's alpha. Uh, and then the matching substitutions psi 0 and psi 1 can be set both as beta. And overall, um, we get to the model where uh, p is mapped to alpha, q is mapped to beta by the unifier and the matching instantiate alpha by beta. Here, the intuition once again is since the machine just locally explores uh, either the left or the right symbol and switches between states P and Q, we just need a term of depth one to encode such local behavior and fully explore uh, what the machine may perform starting from any configuration. So here the intuition, the size of the unifier is in some correspondence to how far the machine will look to the left or to the right until it either terminates or uh, bounds uh, or uh, loops in bounded space. Now we have seen some examples of uh, bounded and not uh, bounded machines. Uh, let's look at the uh, general construction. So first, given a, a simple stack machine M, we directly encode each instruction as a simple constraint. And then the main novelty of the proof is that we can, given a uniformly bound machine, directly construct the solution. So the model um, containing the unifier and the matching substitutions using this new auxiliary function zeta. And zeta maybe is the main contribution of this paper. Uh, Zeta embeds the idea that we need to see whether more space is needed to explore uh, each of the configurations for um, in, inside our uniform bound. Uh, and narrowness is, by the way, just a decidable property that uh, looks whether more space is needed or not. And based on that, we uh, either have an error term or a variable. I have a backup slide on this if you have more questions. But here, having such a quite simple function zeta, then we may, for a uniformly bounded machine, quite directly give uh, the unifier and the matching substitutions. Uh, and that's why arriving at a solution for the simple simplification problem now let's look at the completeness of the construction. So here specifically, we have once again the same machine encoding. And uh, now we need uh, a somewhat more general lemma showing that if in the machine we can reach from a configuration a, X, a configuration Y, and we have a model of our constraints, then um, due to our construction directly translating instructions to constraints, also this model will model a somewhat more generalized constraints uh, equating the configurations. Uh, but overall, if we have a model, then the syntax tree for each individual state will actually bound uniformly the number of configurations reachable from uh, this particular state P. So overall, if we can model our constraints, then just inspecting the syntax trees of our model we can compute the uniform bound for M.
also quite directly. Now, to summarize the contribution of the paper is uh, first, an intuitionistic variant in the sense of trauma during reduction from immortality to simple stack machine uniform boundness. But this contribution is quite small because it is more or less uh, a remark looking at the um, reduction from immortality to during machine uniform boundness using Koenig's lemma that was done before. And here the main contribution is a fully constructive many one reduction then from this specific unboundness problem for simple stack machines to semunification. And the main features are the construction self is quite direct using this function zeta. Also, it is mechanized in axiom free cock, where the mechanization turns out to be quite small, just 1,500 lines of code. You can find it at the link below. And this contribution is and will be uh, part of the ongoing work where we want to mechanize a reduction from Turing machine halting problem to simplification, uh, not just from the immortality problem. And this reduction we want to be comprehensive. So not just start with some intermediate problem, but start with the Turing machine halting problem. We want this reduction to be many one as the current proof still requires Turing reductions in between and not just many one reductions. We want this proof to be axiom free as the current approach still requires Brouwer's fan theorem, which is not uh, part of full constructivity. And finally, it would be nice to have this reduction as part of the library of undecidability proof that already contains a lot of undecidability results. So thank you for listening. And now we can have the questions. OK, so thanks for that talk. And uh, yes, we do have a little bit of time for questions. Um, I'm not sure whether Andre. I'm here. OK, great. So if there are any questions, I'm looking if there are any. Um, any open? Of course, some raised hands. No, no raised hands. Uh, yeah, there is one raised hand, but maybe that was already. Let's see. Daniele, did you have a question now, or was that from the previous, the previous time about the sound? Uh, so that must have been from a previous thing. Daniele has her hand up. Uh, there is a question by uh, Pierre Vial. How did you discover this? Great. <laughs> Good question. So the question is, how did you discover this by chance or not? And um, I have discovered this by first being forced to mechanize sim sim the undecidability of simonification, and then starting to mechanize uh, the original proof and already seeing that uh, it is maybe not feasible for me to mechanize. So that's why uh, out of laziness, I started to look for different approaches. And uh, uh, at some night, I just woke up and had the idea, uh, which I wrote at a, a small piece of paper, and uh, then it's worked out. So one could say by chance, but also by uh, the original proof is, I think, quite hard to mechanize. There is another raised hand by Pierre. Pierre? Yes, do you okay. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so yeah, yes, yeah, the, it's a, an interesting, very interesting talk. Uh, yeah, the problem is und undecidable, so, and you, we know that the undecidable problems are the, the most interesting. And to, to look for uh, trying to have a solution anyway. So does your method may lead to an interesting uh, semi-algorithm to answer the problem of uh, anti-unification? This is a very interesting question. Uh, I have not so uh, thought about this, um, but uh, it would require so a solution for uniform boundedness for uh, this stack machine model would directly lead to a construction of a semi-unifier. 
So if one would have a heuristic to see whether a given stack machine uh, is uniformly bounded or not, then one would get directly uh, a semi-unifier. And now the question is, uh, what is harder, finding a heuristic for semi-unification or finding a heuristic for the simple stack machine model? Uh, I would say that one can get inspiration from termination proofs uh, for arbitrary rewriting, which is also part of uh, the conference. And maybe there one can get, get ideas how to uh, heuristically uh, decide uniform boundedness. So I think this is a nice aspiration to uh, look at um, uh, algorithms to uh, heuristically solve same unification, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, I think we should. Yeah, this can is probably, yeah. uh, was it the same person? Sorry. No, uh, there, there is, oh, uh, I'm sorry, no. Uh, sorry, I had raised my hand, but it was my mistake. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see any other hands or questions. Uh, so I think, Maybe we can congratulate you again. Let's congratulate Andre again for winning this award. It's really great work. And uh, I think this is the end of our sessions.